Live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Barcelona, Spain for HP Discover 2014, the European edition. This is theCUBE. We are out at the event to extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Paul Miller, Vice President of Worldwide Marketing for HP Converge Systems. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Great Glad to, to always be here. Great to yeah. see you. You're looking good. I mean, looking good right now. You're feeling good in the morning. Must have had a good night's sleep last night. No. You know? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, nobody Barcelona, sleeps. everything, <laughs> dinner's at 11 and everything starts at 2 and then you got to get up early You're in like, the morning. like, what? What time uh, is it? <laughs> meeting. So you, got, you must be busy. Um, I'll see customer event here. Yeah, you must be out talking to all the customers. What's the update? What are customers saying? What's going on in Europe? Uh, what's going on with Converge Systems? Obviously, it's headlining the show. Cloud, Converge Systems, big data. Um, customers, partners are all here. What's the story? Yeah, so Converge Systems is really hot this year again. You know, we, we're incorporating Converge Systems in our ES offerings, in our cloud offerings, and then taking it to the next level with the new CS700 that we just launched, uh, I guess, two days ago here. Right. Okay, so, and we've been sort of talking to the folks. We had Nariman on, uh, Jeff Carla came on, uh, Chris from Avnet was here. And um, I wonder if we could just take start at the high level, just yeah. sort of talk strategy for a second. So you think about this whole converged infrastructure, converged systems play, you guys sort of started that, I don't know, back in 2009 maybe, you and some yep. others, was it, you weren't alone in that, in that vision, but you guys were early, arguably first. There's been a spectrum that's emerged right. um, in terms of the, 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 the flexibility, you know, I always, I always joke sort of, you know, the Henry Ford, any <laughs> color you want as long as it's black is sort of one end yep. of the spectrum, and the other is, hey, this can work and it's pre-tested and pre-engineered, um, but there's a lot of options. So I wonder if you could help us just sort of understand the spectrum from HP's perspective. Right, so what we learned is that customers don't want just completely fixed. It doesn't meet all their workloads. So what we spent a lot of time is understanding how you could give the value of fast time to delivery, integrated management, as well as the life cycle management. Keep those elements that customers want. They want you to manage their software and firmware updates. They want to make sure that there's longevity to the products. But they also want the flexibility because sometimes they're running things like simple workloads like Exchange, which is relatively simple, versus a large database. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've modularized the architecture of the 700. So you have compute modules, storage modules, and then networking modules. By enabling us to do that, and, and then keeping a tight linkage, we're able now to give you an all flash system for you know, your heaviest, heaviest workloads, and in the same 700, enable you to just stand up maybe static web pages that you're just going to use standard hard drives. But it's all about the processes we've developed, and then the magic is the software-defined piece of this. Right? Convergence started as really people thinking it's all about hardware, the real end game of convergence is how you use software-defined infrastructure management to really provide that value of simplicity, of the lifecycle automation that customers really see the net value in. Okay, so let me follow up on that. So the because HP's been talking about sort of modular components since the mid 2000s, yeah. <laughs> right? So I understand this is clearly different, um, and. Your last point was the a big difference is the software-defined yeah. piece of it, and there's probably others. So let's let's talk about that software-defined piece. A lot of people like to think of software-defined in in the old stovepipes. Oh, you got virtualization, which is software-defined for servers, and then you got SDN, which is software-defined for networking. Now you got SDS, which is software-defined for storage. Is that the way we should be thinking about it, or is there more of an overarching S SDS or S SDDC? vision. Yeah, so um, the way we're thinking about it and architecting to is that there's an automation hub. And that automation hub is where your software-defined storage plugs into, your software-defined uh, uh, networking plugs into, your bare metal hardware plugs into. It's also where we integrate in with other councils like VMware vSphere, Microsoft System Center, and then up into the cloud. If you're using 
VMware to stand up clusters, they're very good at standing up the virtualization side of it, but you still need someone to partition and, and provision the underlying infrastructure and make sure it all connects together. So that's where we go down into the infrastructure, whether it be physical or software-defined storage, we can do both and then up. So we really see that to pull off the software-defined data center of the future, you need this automation hub, the central point that all the other pieces plug into, whether it be third-party software or software-defined elements, whether it be networking or, or storage. So you said earlier, Paul, that um, customers just don't want one thing. It just doesn't give yeah. them enough flexibility. Some of your competitors, I mean, VC, when it, certainly when it started, uh, in Oracle, here's one thing, boom. Yep. Here's a block, or here's a big box. Yep. And there's clearly value in that. There's no question about it. But customers were always concerned about the mother of all lock-in, right. um, number one. And number two, they're concerned about the flexibility. You guys came at it somewhat differently. You right. always started up with sort of a more open mentality, maybe trading off some of that right. one color, yeah. many colors yeah. on this black. <laughs> or um, Oracle, it's red. <laughs> yeah, 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 one red or black, oh, there you go. So, so what have your customers seen in terms of the value proposition, the, the, the business outcome? Um, I wonder if you could take okay. us through sort of where you guys started and, and where you're going now, what you're seeing in the field. Okay, so let me give you a couple customer examples. Right. A large uh, grocery retail chain, they want to double the amount of storefronts they have. Same size of staff, uh, actually it's not an all HP shop, but they're looking for a way to take their same staff and be able to put out stores. The faster they can stand up a store, integrating all the inventory, integrating all the points of sale, integrating all the, the value chain into that, the faster the revenue flows back into the company. So they're looking at HP's modular approach to say, okay, I can start off with my base stores, then I need to add a small store, add this module, build upon that. If I need to add something, a new application that may uh, require flash drives, I can add that module. So they're looking at this as not, I'm buying a chunk, then I buy another chunk, but I'm buying into a strategy that modularly allows me to grow and they are a Cisco shop, and we're allowing them to have a Cisco top or rack switch as part of that modular growth path. They're using a combination of both now, but that's where they're going. And because the automation tools extend across that, they're able to stand up their applications faster and deliver that value to stand up a, a, a retail store faster. I like that application. First of all, I like it because it's not VDI. So many times, <laughs> I mean, I know it's all great, VDI, 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 here's a block, okay, great. Yeah. Really narrow. I like the, the example because it's, a, it's an application platform. It's an infrastructure exactly. platform that's horizontal. Which exactly. is what everybody talks about, and that's an example of it. Now, so, okay, so, Time frame for this was when did this all start? This project. So, um, so we're going to make it. We announced it here at, uh, at Discover. It's going to start rolling out in the U.S. in uh, January, February, and then worldwide in the March time frame. You, you've announced it here. Or are you going we to announce it? We announced it here on uh, Tuesday, and, actually. And did, and did you announce who the customer was? Or oh no, we didn't announce oh, who no, the customer okay. was. Right, yeah, we okay. are talking about other customers <laughs> uh, that I can, you know, uh, One of the customers we had talked about is Havel. Havel is a, a, a Nordic company. Started 80 years ago selling uh, office supplies, you know, pencils, papers, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't around yeah, 80 yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah. Uh, in the 80s, they started selling uh, computers to small businesses. They bought into our strategy and now have become a service provider as opposed to an office supply provider, providing applications out to their end customers. Okay. So they've really Building changed their, their cloud whole on top of business model from you know, from once just being an office supplier to second delivering PCs out the door to now being a full-fledged service provider. Now, um, you guys have made a lot of uh, investments in configurations and solutions around uh, different you know, platforms, particularly SAP HANA yep. is one that you're focused on. I wonder if you can give us the update on that. That's something we really uh, haven't talked much about this week. Yeah, HANA is hot. Um, you know, customers are seeing the value of moving to in-memory and the speed of moving to in-memory. And what it's enabling them to do is you know, change their business models, change how they look at <coughs> data and integrating data around. So it's been one of the biggest things that we've had going. And <coughs> excuse me, a couple different technologies that we're really promoting here at the show is one around 
uh, the platform of HANA that we built upon the new Superdome X. It's the CS900, and it's also been known as HANA Hawk in the industry. That's the one that Antonio kissed, right? That's when Antonio Kissing kissed. hawks. <laughs> oh yeah, we've got, actually, uh, a lot of the sales reps who sell HANA have been coming up and kissing it too. There's a whole <laughs> photobombing thing about that. And what it does is that it provides this high availability resilience that was only used to be available on Unix machines. So a lot of SAP today is running out of old style Unix boxes. Now they can move their mission critical ERPs systems over and get that same high availability resilience, same memory resilience. I'm talking to customers all at the show about this and they're like, finally I can get off my legacy systems and move to this. It's got the built-in partitioning. It's going to be a real great product. So HANA is a meaningful part of your business. You're saying HANA's hot, it's, uh, uh, interest, it is, uptake. It's actually the Hot point. in terms of interest, hot in terms of it's actual in, in deals? Deployments, or? In yeah. deployments, yeah. Every, so you're doing HANA deals. We're doing big HANA deals. We're doing small HANA deals. Yeah, if you look at you know, our pipeline um, and what we fulfill, we always have a backlog at the end of every quarter of new HANA deals that are you know, we're going to fulfill as we enter the future. Is this... Is this uh, are these HANA deals from it, from the, the end customer standpoint, are they incremental sort of business opportunities or are they sort of baselining their traditional database, whether it's an Oracle or DB2 or even? So, so it varies. So some customers um, are doing a complete floor sweep. One customer uh, that we're talking to wants to floor sweep out a petabyte of data that's currently on legacy, legacy systems. Right. There are other customers who are seeking value by standing it up in a configuration we call a sidecar. They're keeping their existing systems, but they're sucking the information out to get you know, information in seconds versus days and analytics in seconds versus days. So some are just augmenting their systems and others are doing force mm -hmm. So I've some chats here from CrowdCheck. Slash HP Discover, join the conversation. Uh, question for you, Paul. We're hearing uh, from customers about flexibility, existing systems, but the, the main point in here is uh, from one of the, the chat members is the, the market's changing, right? So you know they need to reduce their reliance on one vendor. That's why open source has got traction, certainly on the cloud side. Um, so the question for you is um, uh, um, existing investments. Um, how do I use my existing investments, no vendor lock-in, new projects have new tech, new requirements, how do I increase my speed of deployment with lower cost and greater control? <laughs> that sounds a greatly a sound bite that comes in, you hear that yep. on stage, you hear that from customers. Yep. That's the choice question. So give us the two cents on how you guys are marketing to that, what's, this, what's the value proposition, because that's the reality. Right. I have existing stuff, I got a bridge to the future, Right. what so, do I do? So, when I talk to customers, they talk about existing stuff. Very few of them have existing underutilized assets. When they mean existing stuff is they're talking about, I've trained my people. My people know how to do Cisco. They, I've got it in my infrastructure. They're usually adding capacity, but they don't want to throw away that investment in training and the interim operability. So that's why we went and, and, and so made the So underutilized, underutilized infrastructure and practices and processes around yeah, stuff. Yeah, practice and processes. Okay. So what we're doing is with the new 700, our first step in, in enabling customers to use their existing processes as well as is the Cisco switch. You'll see us open up the architecture even more. And with one view today, we can monitor a Cisco switch so they do get the value of the automation tools, et cetera, that we have in the market. Do you see the multi-vendor stuff? I mean, Dave and I were talking about EVO Rails. We walked by the booth there, saw that. Yeah. Uh, you know, VMware's here, Intel's here. Yeah. A lot of partners. Um, is the future more going to, it's going to be more integration with multi-vendor, less integration? You get storage on one hand saying, hey, we're polymorphic, we have one architecture. You know, so, so the customers kind of need to navigate those waters. Yeah, they, they do, and you know, we're trying to not have a future where you have, instead of silos of server storage and, and, uh, and networking, where your new silos are silos of EVOs, silos of, of other you know, convergence, and you know, part of that is our strategy of one view to have it manage all of it. Yes. So use one view as the automation tool across all, all converged systems. So I want to get your thoughts on a concept that we've been kicking around the queue that comes up almost every show, but more at HP because you guys have that a lead on the converged stuff. Um, and that is lock-in, right? Yep. Lock-in is like has been kicked around, man, we've been in this business multiple decades, it's like lock in spec and it changes yeah. as platforms become more commoditized and tooling and, yep. and packaging comes important with the cloud and other right. things, right. you see that trend. So I got to ask you the question, 
let's talk about locking. I mean, HP wants a lock. Everyone wants a lock. And if they're in business, they want to lock it. So let's just say lock-in is, is having customers buy the stuff and continue to use your stuff. However, lock-in and choice are two different things. And the right. example I use um, in talking to Dave about this is uh, Intel, back in the PC days. I never said, oh, that's lock-in spec, it's Intel. They have proprietary algorithms in their processor. This is a hardened top. Right. It just works. Right. Functionally delivers value. Right. But I can always get an AMD processor and buy another machine. Is that where we're going? Is this, so it's okay to have some proprietary stuff, but if right. it's hardened and it works well yeah, so and plays well with others, there's choice still. So talk about this lock-in and choice dynamic. So when we talk to customers about you know lock-in and what they're trying to achieve, you know, quite frankly, they want to move away from worrying about their hardware and the infrastructure. And what they're looking for us to do is integrate with the things that they've standardized on, which you could call as locking. vSphere, locking. Microsoft System Center is locking. But that's also a good Sticky lock is good. Sticky is good. And what we're trying to do is interoperate with all of those. So that if you're going in and you're managing your system with vSphere, you can buy our systems and get that great value of the automation with that. If you want to move then to the future of System Center, again, yeah. you're not locked in. You still have the infrastructure support through one view of doing You know, I think that's an important point because one of the things, and I, I'm glad you pointed that out because I want to get that on the table because that we're in a very changing market. I mean, it's a, sh a massive shift going on and an inflection point at the same time, which, yep. which is why Amazon's doing so well, and some misunderstood vendors all come out of the woodwork and all, all of a sudden they're blowing up in a big way um, because of the new dynamics, new opportunities, yep. like Converge, right? Yep. Conver extreme Converge to Converge systems. So, lock-in is not so much the old way. No, there's a, there's a, yeah, that's exactly right, and you bring up Amazon, which is a great point. Because I hear more customers worrying about the lock-in of their data, when they put it in a public cloud, all of a sudden my data is locked in there. That's a harder thing to extract. If you don't have a strategy like HP does, we're going to be portable between multiple clouds. So your data never gets locked in. That's really hard lock-in versus a uh, standardized on a Cisco switch type of lock. -in. All right, so i got to ask you about the developer side because one of the things we always watch is developers because the mobile infrastructure trend is booming right now. And yep. You guys are enabling that and we talked to the data center care guys and there's a layer establishing between that and that's kind of the middleware layer. We all kind of know it's the big picture architecture. But i got to ask you, when you talk to customers, they want to get to this agile um, yep. uh, state of deploying fast because <laughs> yep. their business is on the line, right? I mean, they have a new style of IT, new style of business. You guys, you guys call it new style of IT, Meg calls it that. But the reality is, is that they have top line pressure right now. They want to deploy more software on a mobile infrastructure, have it be secure, use big data. All this stuff is reality. Right. So what does Agile mean? What are customers doing? Can you point to some quick use cases of they're moving fast, some data around deployment cycles? Right, right. So maybe just, uh, I think what customers are looking for, right, is the ability to stand up the infrastructure fast, but then give them insight into the future. One of the things we announced here also was the integration of HP OneView with Ops Analytics. Our HP Ops Analytics platform enables them, and the use case we work with customers on, is tell me how my infrastructure is performing so I can put my workload in the most optimal place. Tell me how I can root cause any issue in minutes versus days. Right, customers always have these issues that that happen intermittently. Yeah. But they can never find the, the cause of and they get millions of data points from log entries from all their system. With Ops Analytics now, you can go through those millions of points in actually minutes and find your problem. What that means is you're no longer spending time trying to debug. They can also they can go off and spend time deploying new applications, deploying new services. And they actually then use this to model the future. Because they've got a baseline of how applications are working, they can model, if I want to add way back to our retail, 10 new stores, model it. That's what true business agility is, when you can actually give IT a sense of how their applications and their infrastructure are going to perform in the future. So that's built into the platform. That's built into and, one view and that comes standard and, in our Invert System 700. And the tech is, is that sort of homegrown within the, the group or was it is it sort of a little autonomy in Vertica here and there? This or? was uh, part of HP software, of HP Ops Analytics, and you'll see us do more integration yeah, uh, with okay. that. You know, part of the core engine, I think, is, is some uh, architectures that we've had. So it's IP that came from and, HP software? And, that you Exactly. Yeah, okay. uh, Paul, great stuff. I wish we had more time. I want to just highlight 
highlight, you know, Dave and I were just talking, Tim Crawford was on our crowd chat. He's our kind of remote cube uh, guest. He's out there live chatting with us on crowd chats and the blogger influencer. Um, but great reviews on One View. One View came up multiple yeah. times. It's kind of like the hidden gem here at the show. Um, what's the feedback? I mean, it's oh. getting rave reviews. So we're, we have a, um, uh, a demonstration booth over on the floor. Where customers can actually come and spend two minutes learning one view. It's such an intuitive tool. We built it based on consumer-esque uh, interface, like you know, what you do for uh, playing Xbox, whatever, that was our inspiration. Right. <laughs> and customers can come in and actually learn how to deploy a server, learn how to debug a network in less than two minutes. And then we put them on a race uh. against the clock, right? And they try to beat the time of the next guy. And it's caused a real fury up there. We've got detailed working sessions, but I've had customers come out of this, come out of this going, I'm never going back to VCE. This is the best experience I've ever had. More power than I've ever had delivering infrastructure. So we've had just customers come and just rave about that two minute experience to learn a tool. Tell me any other infrastructure management tool that, that can, goes across server storage and networking that you can actually test drive in two minutes well, and actually be put to the test. Well, let's get this, uh, let's follow up. I definitely want to do a drill down. We don't have a lot of time right now. We've got to kind of get, get in the hook here. Um, <laughs> let's get the marketing folks' names on there. We like to do a follow-up chat on that. Yeah, do a, get some experts on there. Great reviews, so it's, you know, it's one yeah. of those things where it's the hallway conversation, it's not the big Let's get the fifth grader on it. That's what I want to <laughs> say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. That's a true test, you know. Okay, we'll be right back. We are here with Paul Miller, Vice President of Worldwide Marketing for Converged Systems. Uh, it's all coming together. He's uh, he's got the seat on the bus and the destination's new style of IT. And uh, let's see how these guys do. We'll be watching their execution. Certainly, uh, some great products. We'll be right back after this short break. We're in, this is the Cube. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.